Life in football is unbelievable. The excitement that is generated from knowing that you're going to go play in front of at least 70,000 fans. And if you're on a good team and you're playing against another good team in their building, you just know that the intensity is going to be ratcheted up. Torn ligaments in my neck. Knee replacement. Broken collarbone. Wrist sprains. Herniated disc in my back. Ankle sprains. I broke my thumb twice. You can bend my knee just like this, it can move. I played in the NFL for 15 seasons. I played 10 years in the National Football League. Played six years in the National Football League. I've had uh, knee surgeries on both my knees, my ankles, my elbows, my shoulders, my back. I broke my leg in my first year in 71. Still have a lot of work to do for former players. I broke my leg in 72. The cost of trying to provide health care for every player that's ever played in the league. Trauma that comes and does not appear until 10, 20, 15 years later. We will continue to make more efforts. There's a price to be paid for playing in the NFL, and now I'm paying the price. You know, I thought I was Superman when I played, and now I discovered kryptonite, <laughs> it's called retirement. When I was playing, we did not call them concussions. We come to the sideline and we get the little smelling sauce and, okay, get back in. How many fingers do I have up? I can't remember a player being taken out of a game for being concussed. And I had teammates who couldn't remember plays, who played, who were dinged. And finally dinged so much they couldn't play anymore. It depends on how we're gonna define concussions. Is it just literally getting your bell rung? Because there was a while in my career, I didn't think I was playing hard enough unless my bell was ringing. Um, or are we talking about actually being physically knocked out where you have lost consciousness? Because then, you know, there's six or seven or ten or a dozen times where that has happened to me as well. I don't think anybody is positive how many concussions they've had, but um, I probably had two or three in my day. When I would hand the ball off and I would watch a guy go into the pile, what you hear and what you see you wonder how guys are coming out of that. It sounds like a, a, a car accident. It was a game that when the whistle blew, it was hand-to-hand -hand combat all over the field. The axiom that we lived by was that any man can play football, but it takes a real man to play football when he is injured. That always was problematic to me. Most people think that guys get hurt only in games, but there's all these practices. There's way more practices. There's almost five times as many practices that you have, then you have games per week. And a lot of things happen there and it wear and tears your body down. When I injured my knee initially, I was playing at a very high level. So I said to myself, I don't want to get an MRI. I don't want to know exactly what it is as long as I can play. There's lots of people lined up to take this dangerous job. Um, towards the end of my career, I was making pretty good money four or five times what a rookie would make. And anything that holds me, holds me out from playing the game is a threat to my job security. When you're young and you're trying to establish yourself and you want everybody to know that you're strong and you're tough, you definitely shy away from reporting injuries because you, you're gonna get ridiculed. You're gonna be called a soft guy. Uh, they used to have this saying that you can't make the club in the tub, things like that. There's one sign in the New England Patriots training room Durability is more important than ability. That's a very slogany way of saying, have your butt on the field every Sunday, son. <laughs> I think every player in the NFL has injuries that they don't report. Or every NFL team definitely has players that they know have injuries that they don't report. I can't run anymore. My knees have a little arthritis in them, but I feel very fortunate because uh, some of my teammates, uh, some of the guys I played with, they're no longer living or they're having chronic uh, problems, medical problems, they're unemployable. It's a difficult situation for me.
Playing in the NFL was, it was a wonderful experience. When you're playing, you're exerting yourself completely. Even the pain and the, and the working with your teammates, I mean, I felt like I was really alive. I mean, I was completely alive. You don't get into this game thinking safety. You get into this game because you're so cocky, you believe you can do it better than anybody else. You know, it's never gonna happen to me that I get hurt. I think the worst part is after it's over and you have the pains and the, and the injuries that you never thought were gonna come. Having played professional football, one of the things that, that is forever is uh, the relationships with the guys. And we lived together, cried together, lost together. And I can't help but think about one of my favorite teammates, uh, Wesley Walker. We're Jet teammates for eight years, and we're, we're friends forever. I really feel for him. You know, he's suffering a little bit now. With the injuries of dementia, Lou Gehrig's disease, um, uh, it's kind of scary as, as a former player down the road what might uh, could happen. I have so much arthritis and there are some days and that I have a problem walking, functioning. I'm embarrassed of what my body looks like now. If I had a warm up, for instance, with 225 pounds, that's my warm up weight. I'm lucky enough if I could probably lift the bar right now. I have this atrophy. I, I'm starting to look like a skeleton and it's just this right hand alone. But I have this throughout my body. I don't have the desire or the wherewithal to want to work out. And, and that's, that's my really goal. Maybe I need to retire from teaching and just focus on just rehabbing my body. But I don't even have the energy to, when I come home after working, uh, to do anything. I know that I can't do certain things with my hands, like even just a simple twisted off a, a bottle cap that I struggle with. I used to run over to my neighbors just to button my top button because I struggle with buttoning shirts and, and when you're in a hurry and you're trying to get to a function, it's very f frustrating. And there's been times where I almost, I'm crying, I'm sweating, you know, just trying to get help. And I've gone to the bathroom and I can't even wipe myself with my hand. That's very frustrating. So something's going on, trying to figure out what it is and can it be improved? That's the big question. Heroes and Cool Kids, we started it uh, in 1998. It's like a three-tiered mentoring program. We have former professional athletes train high school students to be mentors to fifth or sixth grade kids. It has been successful. It's working just great. It's really the best thing I have ever done in my life. My memory is not good. My, I make my wife so mad, my business partner. I feel, I feel almost incapable of really, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not what I used to be. I have been knocked out on three occasions on the football field. I remember one time I tried to uh, catch a very short and high punt, trying to make uh, an impression on the team, and I should have called a fair catch. But I, I caught the ball, and as soon as I caught it, you know, I got smacked and just, uh, I was out for that one. And I remember I had the ball tucked away, and I remember when I woke up, there was no ball there, but my arm was still in the position like I was holding the ball. You know, it was, it was just weird. I have had concussions. And did you play right after them? Of course. Oh, yeah. The first one, I just got up and ran off the field, came back like nothing happened. I, I don't think any player makes it through playing eight years in the NFL without getting a concussion at least once or twice. Certainly, you don't make it through eight years without being injured some kind of way. So it's a tough, brutal sport. It is. I look back on my career the last three years and I really got lucky. Almost went paralyzed on the football field, practice field, and to have a club want to sign a waiver so they won't be liable. Did you sign the waiver? Yes, I did. And that's a chance that I took. And, and I have to look at myself as being one of the most stupidest persons on earth. I'm very lucky that I'm sitting here talking to you today uh, and not in a wheelchair or dead or from a broken neck. My wife is a nurse, 
when she saw us playing, she saw Joe Klecko with a cast on his, his hand. He, she could not believe he was out there playing with a broken whatever it was on his hand. And it's stupid, common sense, you know, normal life. It's stupid, it's ridiculous. You should not be out playing with a broken hand. There's a whole lot of life, you know, after football. There's, there's a whole lot of life that's much more important than football. We have outgrown our capacity to take on those kind of shots. We're just too strong, too fast, too big, and it's just not safe. You know, they can try to do things with the helmets, but it's not, they're not gonna stop the concussions. There's no way if you're running at whatever miles an hour and, and another guy's coming in the same direction, there's no way you're gonna stop the brain from jarring. And I think about Junior Seau and all the guys that committed suicide. People have no idea how it feels to go through life with stuff that just won't go away. It's horrible. When I get up in the morning and I can't even function and I feel like my legs are giving out and thinking about having more surgery and the culmination of everything together, you know, you're trying to reach for answers, trying to figure out what's the best way to really attack this situation. So that's where I'm at right now, and I uh, hope I can find a cure, which is not out there, but at least to try to manage my pain and some of the injuries that I do have that are getting worse. The hardest thing to realize when you get out of the game is the fact you don't get any more freebies. You don't get any more checks picking up by people you don't, never met because of, they know who you are. Uh, you don't sign any autographs. Uh, nobody wants you. I finally found a job uh, that I really loved, and it was uh, Hertz Rental Equipment. That was the only time that I was making enough money to buy a house. So I bought a house, a brand new house. They were done in January 18th of 02. And February 18th of 02, I had a massive stroke. So I had, to, I had to give up my house. That, that was the hardest thing I ever had to do. Those difficult stories, um, is, they're, they're real people, real, real hurt, and a real opportunity to, to assist a, a, a man and his family. There's so many challenges uh, that players face that the average fan just, they don't know about, and, and maybe they don't. Care. My first reaction is generally sadness because I, I think of the, the personal torment this person has been through. Um, to be on a, a very high mountain um, during their NFL career where we get to play uh, you know, in front of millions, that's a, a long, long, steep slope to go down and I'm, I'm very sad for these guys. My role with the NFL now is I work to assist um, current former players with resources um, around um, professional development, educational uh, opportunities. They have a hard time reimagining themselves uh, outside of the uniform. When you're in the NFL, you're always in the limelight. The light's always shining on you, whether you're the, the best player on the team or, or just a guy on, on the roster. Somebody out there knows who you are. You know, Mark McGuire, great baseball player, Barry Bonds. They can go to a batting cage with a stack of quarters and still feel the swing of the bat. When football's over, it's over. You never, ever, ever play again. There's no old man games at the park. You know what I mean? There's no, there's no rec league football. There will be no time in the rest of your life unless you become like a a televangelist or a rock star, that you're gonna be able to have 65,000 people jump to their feet at something that you do. It's a great feeling, it's awesome. There's nothing else like it in life. Let's go! The, the 
addiction to that feeling, that takes time to wean off of that. The emotional part is much more difficult to cut off. And it literally is just a cut off process. One day you're a football player and the next day you're not. And you never get to do it again. You never strap those pads on. Last time you hung them up, they don't ever come back on again. They're done. 80% of NFL players within two years of um, their last season, they're either bankrupt, divorced, or unemployable. That's tragic. The problem with players is that we kind of think playing is going to last forever. And you can understand why, because you know when you're 22 to 29, you're not really thinking straight. You're making a ton of dough. You're living the life. So you think it's gonna go on forever. You really do, especially when you're in those successful years. When we signed that NFL contract, we knew there was nothing at the end. We all knew that. If you think of football as who you are, opposed to what you do, transition is tough. About year six in the league, they started calling me the old dude in the locker room. And so, you know, when you're getting called the old dude in the locker room, it's probably time to start working towards something else. And it was around that same time that I started working on a master's degree in counseling. From the outside, it looked like I put some pieces in place. Um, you know, I had, a, had a, a, an additional degree, was working right away out of the game, but I, I struggled, and I struggled big time. It's 12 years later, and... Uh, I'm, I'm still transitioning, uh, but I'm a lot more confident in my direction uh, of where I'm going now. I think the NFL gets a bad rap, due in large part to you know, the former NFL players that aren't set up for success. It's sad because I, you know, playing all those years in the league, I know that I had former teammates that uh, are not successful today and are probably in, physically in some pretty bad shape because of the game that they loved and they played. On the same hand, I know of even more of my teammates that are successful because they played in the NFL and because they handled their money right and their personal lives right. And that's always the rub. You know, where does the personal responsibility come in and where does the, the league responsibility or the team responsibility come in? It's hard when it's a close friend of yours or a teammate and, you know, there's nothing you can really do to, to warn them. And uh, I always say for guys that go down the wrong path on that front, it's not that they make poor decisions, they make poorly informed decisions. And I look at that as a big challenge to what I'm doing now, is to get the right information to guys so that they make well-informed decisions. Given the right information, uh, football players were smart enough to figure it out. Why wouldn't you want to hire a football player? Why wouldn't you want to hire somebody that has those virtues of football built within them all after all those years, the responsibility of being there on time. You know, somebody who works well with others, somebody who, who can communicate. There are a lot of reasons why you would want to hire those football players, and that's why those guys are all successful. The job I have right now probably wouldn't have hired me if I wasn't a former NFL player. Go. I'm a personal trainer, and I love my job. I enjoy helping people, and every day I'm, I'm helping people, whether it's a 60-year-old woman losing weight or a 17-year-old high school Six, athlete getting ready for seven. college. I get probably three emails a week about opportunities for post-NFL players. Whether I reply back to those emails or whether I read those emails becomes my choice. I think every player in the NFL gets those same opportunities post-career. Unfortunately, some of the players don't accept that help. Um, they don't seek that help. But the, the NFL itself, I feel, does a lot to, to help retired players transition, try to get them jobs, try to put them in different programs, try to give them other opportunities. Is it perfect? Nothing in this world is. Can it improve? Yes. Has it improved? It, it continues to improve. Being a former player, we're real life uh, examples for, for these guys that have walked the walk, worn the boots, been in the locker room, understand the environment, understand the culture. And, and that peer-to-peer -peer model uh, can open the door to getting guys to, to take a look 
You know, we, we, we open the door a little bit and they're more apt to take a look because we look like them. We're fighting for our brothers um, and, and working to assist them in any way that we can. We were the game. We were everything. We made it all happen. When we're out there, we're, it's us. So and if the industry is going to generate that kind of money, why shouldn't the product be a part of the benefit, reap the benefits? Take care of me, please. If I, if I end up in a nursing home, I don't want my wife and my children to be burdened with, with, the, with the bills and everything that comes with that. We are supposed to be taken care of. We should not have to pay one dime. I think most of us would be willing to do it all over again and take all those risks all over again and live the life that we were afforded to live when we actually did play. It's part of the game, part of what you love, it's part of what you wanted to do. And the way I look at it, okay, what came along came along. I can't do anything about that. You have no regrets? No. I have no regrets. It was my choice. And if you walked around better, you know, for choices I've made, I couldn't do that. This is what I wanted to do. This is what I chose to do. But the question would be, if you know this was going to happen down the road, would some of these players make the choices or do the things they did? Knowing the things I know now, there's no way I would do it. For me personally, I have no regrets. I have memories, trips, pictures, friends that will last a lifetime. And even though the NFL doesn't last a lifetime, I will always be a former NFL player.